Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Sports Exchange. We've got the dream team tonight, and that dream team is what you see practically all the time. Anyways, we got my other creator of the Sports Exchange, George Eichhorn. Welcome back, GE. We bring good things on the air. Well, thank you for the nice compliment. I've never been called the dream team guy, but uh, I'll take it. Listen, pal, you've been around <laughs> me 43 years. If you're not dream team by now, God only knows when you ever will be anyways. And, and my two prize colleagues over at sideline sports jb the program welcome to the program hey as long as it's not the michael keaton dream team we're okay <laughs> yeah. well it isn't it's our version of the dream team okay so it is what it is and jacob christner my colleague from pundits pundit this guy is dedicated to the partnership because we the two of us get to do double headers every wednesday absolutely. Don't we take them? absolutely and i am the john stock to the dream team the isaiah thomas is pissed all right. Well, with that said, Jacob, what I want to do since when this is a Wednesday night doubleheader, why don't you go out there and give everybody a very quick overview about what we discussed on Pundit's Pundit? Oh, absolutely. What we had was we had Vince McMahon's final stand, had a good conversation on that type of deal. We talked about the NFL. We talked about the bonus pay structure of the NFL. I mean, it just there's all kinds of things that we get to. We talk about the and then we had one tonight that we ran out of time because we got into him so much. I was going to be talking about his trash talk still necessary in sports, but we'll talk about that probably next week. Sounds good to me. All right, well, tell you what, this show here we're going to talk about NFL playoff quarterbacks. We'll talk a little NBA tonight too. I have some pretty interesting NBA things that came across, so we'll go out there and start by going with the National Football League final eight starting quarterbacks by age. This is a glimpse into the NFL's future. I'm going to list them, and everybody can comment on them. Trevor Lawrence, 23, with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Brock Purdy, 23, obviously with the San Francisco 49ers. Jalen Hurts, 24, with the Philadelphia Eagles. Daniel Jones, 25, with the Giants. Joe Burrow, Cincinnati Bengals, 26. Josh Allen, 26, with the Buffalo Bills. Patrick Mahomes, 27. But the Kansas City Chiefs, Dak Prescott, 29. Can you imagine Dak Prescott being a senior citizen of this group? All right, George, I'm going to start right to left all the way around throughout the show. Keep it consistent. I saw that today, Scott. I'm glad you brought that up on our show because that's uh, quite remarkable. It's, um, uh, I guess the NFL has, has got a right to brag about this. I mean, you know, who would have thought about Brock Purdy, of course, you know, being this far and and even Trevor Lawrence, I mean, it's fantastic. These guys are so young, of course. <laughs> Mahomes is like one of the senior statesmen already. But, um, no, it tells me one thing. Don't always bank on guys like Brady and Rodgers and Breeze, okay? Yes, they do get there sometime. But, boy, oh, boy, these young guns are really gunslingers and really doing some remarkable things for their teams. Um, I think it's a great, it's a great story. It's a great story for the networks to cover. And obviously they'll be bringing this up, the age factor on these quarterbacks. Uh, there's a bright future for the league and obviously a bright future in the cases of most of these guys. I um, mean, you're always going to get one or two that are surprises in that group. But I, I really think that, um, you know, for me, of course, Mahomes is the leader of that group, but um you know, it, it, it is a remarkable collection. I'm glad you brought it up. I, I'm interested to hear what the other uh, uh, show hosts have to say about it, too. Well, that other show host is going to follow you as Jacob Christner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I don't know how I'm going to go up to that charge. No. <laughs> no, the, no. The thing about it is you think about why this is happening. Look at the high school numbers now when you look around the country. These high school games are not the um, like the old 1940s. Maybe unless you're in those farm towns with cornfields around it, there's still those <laughs> there's still those T formations and all that stuff. But look at like Texas, Florida. Look at all these. Everybody's breaking everybody's records every year. Four thousand yards, five thousand yards, thirty five hundred yards. This up. This guy got eleven thousand yards. Look at them. They're all they're all doing these things. They're all doing this West coast offense. They're all doing, and they're all doing these flashy offenses. Also, there's also roll route. Everybody's rolling out. Everybody's doing all this stuff. It's just kind of like with these players in the, um, the, with the high school with the watching the NBA and jacking up threes, everybody's playing copycat and they're playing copycat. It's a throwing league. And they're also athletic quarterbacks. There's not going to be Matt Ryan quarterbacks anymore. 
Yeah. There's like me. And Good point. Here's, a, here's another thing that I can say, and I said this on Twitter. People, maybe you saw it, JB. Maybe you saw it. Um, Skylar Thompson and Brock Purdy just put an end to anybody, regardless of any athletic ability or not, put an end to their career as we know it. You can't be nine and eight anymore. You can't be you can't be nine and eight hope to build. Ten and seven hope to build. Literally, Brock Purdy has stopped that. Literally, Skylar Thompson has stopped that. They have stopped. They are, I don't care if you're sixth round, seventh round. There's going to be no excuses. You're going to be on the bench now. The career as you know it is over because of those two. Interesting point. All right, JB. Listen, the NFL's future is bright. We're getting to see it, you know, here uh, in the divisional round. You got some great quarterbacks. You got everyone that you want to see. Uh, it's sad to see Tom Brady go home. You know, it's Aaron Rodgers isn't there. Uh, Matthew Stafford got hurt, and the Rams weren't even involved in the playoffs. But this is this is a young group of you know great quarterbacks that are just you know doing phenomenal things. You got the who's who uh, in the NFL right now. Some of the top guys, and it's only going to get better. Was there a reason you muted? <laughs> Your earbud died. Oh, that's all right. Well, the only thing I, thought, gonna... I thought you had a big fart you just didn't want to show to the audience. Oh, there you oh, go. No, no. That may be one of those TMI kind of deals, okay, but whatever. <laughs> but at any rate, the only thing I'm going to add to this whole thing is this. Seven of these guys, I'm not surprised, are on this list. The one I am, Brock Purdy. But now what you have is you really have an interesting situation in San Francisco. Because now you got Brock Purdy in there, okay? And then you, you may have a, and I say dynamic, because I don't think there's a competition. QB1 next year in San Francisco would be Brock Purdy. What do you do with Trey Lance? And I really know that Jimmy Garoppolo could be moving on somewhere else. Well, here's a guy that got, uh, Rand Carthen was hired by the Tennessee Titans today as their new general manager in Nashville. I wouldn't be surprised at some point if the Titans – make a move to bring on Trey Lance to go to, because who do they have? I think Ryan Tannehill's co contracts are get slashed anyways. And I don't think Malik Willis is ready and Trey Lance. So it's not uncommon for a guy to bring in someone from a previous, you know, like what the Lions did with Brad, Brad Holmes. Holmes and yep. Jared Goff. Goff. So there may, so I think the San Francisco 49ers have a good quarterback situation and I know we beat this phrase up so many times, okay? But the reality is the situation is... It know. could very well happen, Scott. I mean, that's a good observation, you know. You you, you know, you, you can't keep paying, you know, two, two. And in San Francisco's case, they got three quarterbacks there and they want a lot of money. I mean, you can't keep doing it. And uh, it'll be an interesting offseason. And, and you're right. There's a possibility he could end up back and, I mean, could get traded it somehow to Tennessee or something because, yeah, they uh, San Francisco uh, can't keep all those guys. No way. Yeah, I mean, so, I, I'm fine. What do you do? What do you do with Malik Willis, though? Then? Do you keep him on the bench? I mean, that's, that was I, their I, first round. You know, no, no, the middle round pick. You know what, JB? Yeah. He's a developmental guy. All right, let me go to the chat room real quick because it's really busy. Denzel Snipes. Fresh over from where we're at, okay. I mean, we got a lot of. Well, I love. You know, I don't. I will. I guarantee you one thing, folks. I'm not losing my voice on this broadcast. I'm going to put them up. You guys respond, all right? George, read them all. Uh, yeah, uh, I agree with JB. It's a young quarterback league, like you said, JB. It certainly is right now. <laughs> Mahomes is 27, <laughs> and he's Coming like the veteran of this group. Right, coming from Will Vogel. I'm going to put them up, put them up really quickly, okay? George, next. Uh, Denzel says, I uh, still say that Herbert wins an MVP within three to four years. Not debating <laughs> that. Next one. Will, yeah, Vogel. Will Vogel, the oldest quarterback, as I mentioned, on the AFC side is Mahomes, 27. On the AFC side, I like good, the way. Good, good, good observation, Will. Yeah, especially knowing, and of course, and uh, smoking Jeremy B. Hello, gentlemen. Yes, Smokin, how are you today? What's up, kneecap? There you go, kneecap. Hey, hey. Next, okay, Denzel's at it. He's on a roll. I guess the Titans uh, have expressed interest in Tom Brady. <laughs> retire, <laughs> retire. Yeah, well, the only, well, the only factor you have there is the Mike Vrabel factor. I will continue on. Uh, All right, here, Beth Truesdale Greenberg. 
I went to school with her at USF. She's oh, been Beth, yes, years. and I like the 49ers to do well. And guess what, Jacob? She's in Atlanta. Look her up. Cool. Nice cool. person. <laughs> really nice no, people. no, but I was saying, I appreciate it. Hi, Beth, how you doing? I'm saying, I, I was saying last year I wanted um, Brady to retire. I said yeah. I wanted to say because it could get worse. I it agree got with worse, you. worse, and then it I... could get worse and worse and worse. At some point, we brought this up in one of our shows, Scott. You remember this on the Pundits Pundit. Yeah. It's like the arrogance and the immaturity of a, of a, a Tom Brady and a Ric Flair who refuse to go. Be it's like you can get, you can do competition by business. You can do it however many ways, going to make your money. Look at Michael Jordan, what he did. He didn't right. know he wanted to retire, but he had to look at what he's doing with the Jordans. Look I'm what he's doing that. with that brand. It's yep. like, that's another way you can do it. But you, it's just, there are people dead afraid to get old. And the yeah. issue is you get so immature and then you can die before you're able to grow up. I agree. I All agree. Right, continue okay. With yeah. Smoking Jeremy B's on a roll. And Jeremy, thank you for straightening me out because the Jimmy G is a free agent after this season. And Trey Lance could hit the trade block, but highly doubtful. Mm. Well, Lance is the issue with is the, the Lance is the same conversation that I had. You know what I mean? That he had the same conversation that I was bringing up with this. It's the fact that um, Brock Purdy and Skylar Thompson just <laughs> ended the idea of someone picking up a quarterback and hopefully you'll go 10 and seven. And then you build up from there. They're not doing the build up the ladder anymore. It's over. Yeah. That was yeah. sixth and seventh rounders getting in there. Forget it now. And the Colts. I mean, oh, so what true. Round was, what Jeremy. round was that Tom Brady draft today? Remember that guy? You know, the one yeah. that you tell him yeah. to retire. Absolutely. So I yeah. mean, it's always been that way. If you have talent, you know, scouts don't always notice it. A lot of the time depends what you put it into the practice field, into yep. study where plays are going to get opportunity. Yep. And right. Jeremy B. also weighed in on the Colts. Yeah, that's probably very true. The new wash quarterback retirement home in the NFL. All right, we'll keep it rolling. I like I like it when we have surround of these. No! No! Brady to the Colts. No! Ooh! Ooh! Right. And everybody's... Everybody... Will Volgo, Lance, uh, does fit the 49er system, and Purdy does. All right, well, we have a lot to digest here. So you know what? Here's my reality of the whole situation, okay? And that's this, okay? That I think that, for me, the 49ers have a unique situation. QB1, though, if I were going to predict now, would be Purdy, followed by Lance to see what happens there. And I should point out for a lot of people watching that the Dallas Cowboys are 5-3 and three overall in the postseason against the 49ers in their history. So that game will be renewed there. And yes. Okay. We'll go back to, uh, well, Vogel says he made a mistake. No, you're not, you're, you're not, oh, the does person. not fit. Thank you. Will, for the correction. Does That's not right. fit I knew what he meant. Yeah. Game. We all knew what you meant. Well, you get a and mulligan. Purdy's the man. Yeah. Purdy's the man. We'll, we'll get, we'll get some mulligan for yeah. that. I think we all can figure out that that's sure. what's the case. So, so with that said, the history of that rivalry over the weekend, Dallas owns a five to three lead 49ers oh, won a year ago. Oh, and the that, great battles over time, Scott. Those two teams have had oh, yeah. tremendous rivalry. It's going to yeah, be well, one of them led the Super Bowl Anzo. 16 when we're talking about the catch. Yeah. Probably, you know, Joe Montana to White Clark. White Clark. And, you know, I will say this to you 49er fans out there. I had a chance to see Joe Montana's final game over at Candlestick Park when he, um, the night before my birthday, 24 to 3, when I was turning 30. Well, guess what, folks? That was 30 years ago. Goodness! All right, anyways. You saw his final game as a 49er, but not as a Chief, correct? As a Chief. As a 49er at Candlestick yeah. Park, George. Yeah. I'm at the eve of my 30th birthday, and now I'm 60. Go figure. And, okay, Denzel's back in the groove here. 49ers traded a lot to get Trey Lance. Purdy's a single-handedly telling the team they messed up, too. And all that happened. So, And if you're front office, you have to admit that, you know what, you can find quarterback talent. That's why I don't put a lot of stock in a lot of these franchise guys going in the first round because you're going to find them all over the place as well. And, and you get them relatively cheap early, and then you pay them later. So, But that said, I'm glad we talked. I'm glad that this topic was a lightning rod conversation because it got an awful lot of people involved. With that said, George, just going to take us back a little bit of time. We're going to talk about NBA, okay? But this is a really good NBA topic. I really like this one. 
Home sweet dome. The Warriors route the Spurs 144-113 Friday night. NBA record crowd 68,323 at the Alamo Dome, which, by the way, I've been to. Shattered the previous record of 62,046. Who we'll watched Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls play the Atlanta Hawks at the Georgia Dome March 27th, 1998. George, we used to watch games at the Pontiac Silver. Yes, Hill. we did. We My did. Goodness. And the Pistons, when they knew they were going to have a big crowd, they would pull that big curtain back. Remember, Scott? To oh, yeah. open, up, open up that third deck, the upper deck of the Pontiac Silverdome. And the Pistons uh, also hosted uh, U of M against Notre Dame in college basketball. And I knew that drew over 40,000. But, yeah, even the Silverdome, though, can't come close to those two records, Scott, at the Alamo Dome and the Georgia Dome. But, boy, oh, boy, yeah, you, you, you I, I'll never forget. I, I sat up there for a couple of the games, you know, with family uh, way up high at the Silverdome. And it's like watching ants, you know. Yeah, but, watching but George, NBA. Let, me, let me tell you something, though. I don't think at that time the NBA was really worried about how many people they could put in because they knew the crowds would be 30, 40,000. Right, right. These, these games are being put on with the intent to set records. I guess we're not done on the football side. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and ride one. We'll keep talking about this as well. Everybody deserves a comment to get it out there. And so Snipes, when you bank solely on a general te- – Generational talent only exists in the first round. You get into Marcus Rosso. Yeah, our, arguably one of the biggest busts of all time. Smoking Jeremy. George, you get to read this one. Purdy fits the Shanahan system. Dink and dunk and run the ball. Lance, until he gets used to reading a defense as a read and run quarterback, so he isn't a fit. Lance was a John Lynch pick, not Shanahan. Here's another thing I want to bring up with this. Sure. Yeah, I, I bring it up with my Bears all the time. That's why I get mad at the fans. Get a system. System. This Brock Purdy is the example of what I want to see with a system. There is no system at all with uh, with Justin Fields. And whether Justin Fields is better than Trubisky, which he is, but here's the thing. There was a system, something resembling a system. Maybe he stunk, but there's something resembling a system, and there was winning. Guess what? There is, and, and here's the thing about Brock Purdy. It's a system. Who cares if he does five things and that's all he does and he went three Super Bowls? Who cares if he's the greatest ever? Win. There you go. Well, I'll tell you what. Yeah. One more time I really want to put up. All right, Will Vogel, I appreciate you guys pulling my comments. I love commenting. I hear it makes you feel like a columnist. Guess what? Well, I'll give you, I'll give you a great way to get into the platform. Become a writer. JB, Jacob, and I would be awfully proud of you if you want to go ahead and take your comments and turn them into writing and be a columnist. You I would, bud. I would. Here. We would love to have you as a colleague. I would read you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, news Ray, we'll go out there and promote all day long there. Well, if you want to be a columnist, there's an opening, and you know where to find us. All right, Denzel. There we go. Uh, that time period was classic. He'll never get NBA games at a dome. Football's indoor stadium again. The closest he'll get is the NCAA Final Four. True, but you know what, though? You might every now and then, Denzel, get games here and there. If you're really looking to pull in a – Big crowd because now you got the NHL has a winter classic and outdoor games. And if there's publicity involved, the larger crowds always look at you. So I there's one thing. I'm sorry, sorry. There's one thing you forgot. You said that there wasn't the games. 1988, uh, when not 98, when the Jordan won, uh, beat the tie, uh, beat the record, 62 yeah. grand, 62 nine or something. They beat Bird against Detroit, 61 grand, like 87 or eight. Yeah, these are the yeah. Right. That, I didn't forget that one. These are the two that actually came up as a top two. Uh, I didn't go that deep into the research at all, Jacob, because they're talking about the fact that it eclipsed one particular total. That's why we didn't ignore it. We just went with the top two. But but thanks for bringing it up. It's appreciated. All right. Well, you know what? Well, think about talking to me about it. Now you've done it in front of a few people. We're welcome to have you on as a columnist all day long. You can write anytime you want, once a week, once a month, whatever. I think you may have found your niche here. Well, if you really want to be a columnist, and I guarantee you, JB, Jacob, and George, well, we have no problem endorsing that yeah. suggestion all day long. So, any uh, JB, some thoughts about the home sweet tone? Save your money, watch it on TV, go to a bar. You're not seeing anything from way up there. You set a record, big whoop, it means nothing. You just made the Spurs a lot of money for, for you not being able to see anything. You know, were they giving away beers for $2 with the hot dogs, you know, a buck each? pretzels you know 25 cents no i'm sure they still charge regular price so all you did was prove you were a sucker to go to that game 
I'm all for going to games. I, I go to as many games as I can. <laughs> but if I can't see it, there's no point of me spending money to go. Well, well I hate you get the screen. You get the screen, JB. Well, I hate watching watch it on the screen. Hey, JB, let me ask you a question, okay? You, you talk yeah. about that. But the first time I, I actually saw a basketball game in a dome was the 1982 NCAA Final Four when Michael Jordan was there as well. And I went to the Final Four. I didn't mind the nosebleed anyway. It was good. But you know what would later happen? When I moved to Phoenix, I had an opportunity to interview Gary Bender, who called the game for CBS when he was because he was a commentator for the Phoenix Sun. So, no, I, I didn't mind traveling all the way from South Florida to New Orleans to see the Final Four when you have a Jordan Dean Smith sighting. But, no, otherwise you're right. I mean, well, let's face the reality. You, you know, you have a chance to be part of it. And now also I should point out, though, that was a – 50th anniversary of the Spurs actually moving to San Antonio, which is why they put this game in the Alamo Dome is what they did. All right, more. Well, but, well I was going to, I was just going to add, and don't forget Michigan still holds the record for hockey, uh, both the college hockey uh, record crowd at U of M stadium. And of course the, the, uh, uh, the uh, New Year's day game. Detroit, well, against, no, Detroit yeah. against Toronto over 105,000. There's another one for you. Denzel's on a roll. Then again, Imagine a Lakers again. game with LeBron featured at SoFi Stadium, though. You want to know when that's going to happen? When? When Bronny plays. Good po- yeah, if, he, if he's a Laker. No, I'm just, well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, regardless of where you do it, Bronny, he wants to play with his kid. So that's oh, when yeah. they will have that Oh, yeah, good game. point. Yeah. All right, you know what? I'm having so much fun with this thing. I'm actually feeling like I'm technologically good. Beth Greenberg. Thumbs Zan. up, Beth. Yeah, you fat thumbs up, Beth. You're on a roll. Glad you're with us. All right. Oh, kneecap. Look at kneecap. Teams that have three superstars on a team facing a team with the same. That would be the only way to fill a football dome game these days. Boy, I'll tell you, sometimes I feel like the report card I'm getting from everybody with all this response over a couple good of Good topics, topics Scott. Here. Very good topics tonight. I don't pat myself yeah. on the back, but the chat room is helping me out a little bit here, so <laughs> – So, all right, JB, any closing thoughts on Home Sweet Dome? Because I got a few other topics that we're rolling with. Yeah, don't don't waste your money. If it's a Final Four, I can understand. But to go see the Spurs because it's their 50th anniversary, go to a different game. Don't, you know, don't waste the money. Okay. All right, let's move on. Andy Reid, phenomenal. Doug Doug Peterson should be the coach of the year race. Peterson worked under Reid, though, I should point out. So, we you know, I tell you, that would be a hard one to argue against. It really would. You're talking about. I agree. Like, mm-hmm. uh, even Dan Campbell was quoted on the Manning show on Monday Night Football. And even uh, Danny Campbell said the same thing. You know, Peterson, there's a lot of more coaches deserving of, 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 of the coach of the year honors, but he's got to be at the top of the list. Right, I should point out before we go any further that the Sports Exchange can be heard on iHeartRadio, Apple, Spotify, Google, wherever you get your podcasts. Please hit the sub- red subscribe button, okay, on YouTube, South Florida Tribune. And we're striving for a 1,000 subscribers and then some. So we would appreciate all the support that we can get out there from you folks. We appreciate bringing these broadcasts here on the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel every week, as many as we possibly can. So please support us, and we'll do our best to give you the best comments, co- content, commentators, commentators, and I have more in the world. So. All right, so all right, Jacob Doug Peterson, Coach of the Year. You think you should win it? Yeah, you're gonna need. I mean, you gotta say that because he had a disastrous situation with Urban Meyer that he had to deal with. Yeah, and it's the same thing that I was bringing up with the NBA with Billy Donovan having to deal with Jim Boylan's garbage in Chicago. It's you. This when you. It is. It is one thing if you win against a, with a losing team. It's another when you've got a grease fire. And uh, but those two situations, what I brought up are the grease fires. And if you can win and get past that, and, and heck, oh, let me tell you this right now: the five wins we expected was already going to be better anyway, and they just they shocked the world. So yeah, I've got Peterson. I can have Peterson winning it. It's like why not? You know what I'm saying? Why not? It's like because he took. Not only is it winning, it's gre- it's taking the grease fire and not worrying about it. Oh. It's like um, it just is. You can't. It, it, not everybody can do that by itself. You just get another coach and another coach till it's over. Detroit's been a grease fire for years. I love Dan Campbell. <laughs> I love Dan Campbell. I would I would be great if he would win it. If he would win it, no questions asked. But this is the second year to pull it off. Peterson? 
Well, yeah. I know this situation all too well. I've lived it for the last quite a few years. I'll be writing some good Jacksonville Jaguar stuff as well. So, JB, some thoughts on Doug Peterson. You know what, though? Before you go out there and do it, let's go ahead and go to smoking Jeremy B. Peterson or Dable deserves coach of the year honors. Uh, Brian, no Dable. argument here. Yeah, good point there. You know, let's keep going. Okay, with Denzel, good stuff here. Okay. When Doug, when Dougie P came back versus the Chargers, he sewed up coach of the year. Like it shouldn't be that much of a debate right now. That was a classic. Jags may be the class of the AFC South for some time to come, says Denzel. Yeah, all right, let's keep going with the comments. We're going to let those go a little bit. All and right. he single-handedly brought this team up from hard times in 12 months, capital letters. Fast recovery from Urban Meyer. <laughs> all right, well, Will, if you keep you keep typing. Make sure you're enough typing for your first article. Will, Will says, like I said, if Peterson, Peterson uh, wins, it's because he and Trevor are going to bring free agents to Jacksonville because of Peterson is a good coach. Won the Super Bowl, and Lawrence got huge upside. All right, well, you know what? Will Vogel, you have a 7 o'clock deadline to take everything off this chat and put it in that column. Just kidding with you. <laughs> no, we, we here, one of the things, too, is I wanted to bring up something. With, I brought up Dan Campbell earlier. I wanted to bring something up. You, you could tell from that whole thing with the Mannings that he's still a coach because everybody else from the Internet, the Mannings themselves, were going to bat. Bat, you know what? Over Mahar and Ma Maher missing, 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 missing those uh, extra points. Here's Campbell. Got the ups there, I, and it's like that's a coach. That's a coach who's imagining that's he's he's going to have a player like that, and he's going to yeah. have to. He's just going to have to. He's going to have to pat him on the head. It's you got to like, roll we, with we that. Huh? Yeah. You got to roll with it, yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah. He, he, I'm not going to cut you. I'm not going to get anything. You're going to have a bad day. There's a, he's a coach compared to a fan. There's a huge difference. Big point. Good point. Well, you know, this show may have divulged a columnist now because evidently Will Vogel seems like uh, he's ready to do it. He says he get it done before 7 a.m. With the amount of energy this guy got, I wouldn't put it past him at 7 in the morning. Put that good energy to use, Vogel. We'd love to have it. All right, JB, since you're going through all this Andy Reid stuff, you know, what do you think? Is he coach of the year? No, 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 no. Brian Dable's coach of the year, followed by Pete Carroll. Of course he said that. For, if it wasn't for Staley being a horrible coach in, in Los Angeles, we wouldn't be talking about Doug Peter, uh, uh, Peterson, who's got two number one picks in a row on his team. The Giants were the worst team historically over the last five years. Came into just as bad a situation with a worse quarterback than Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. You know, overall, less talent all over the field. And all they did was win every game they were supposed to win this year. Yeah. And two games that they lost that they should have won at the beginning of the year that I counted that they should have won. Seattle was because of two punt return fumbles, and Detroit was on fire and should have made the, the playoffs. But unfortunately, that loss to Seattle at the beginning of the year hurt them. So there's no question it's Brian Dable. You know, and you got to throw Pete Carroll in there having, you know, Having to have Geno Smith as his quarterback, have to get rid of Russell Wilson. Not saying that Doug Peterson do a, did do a good job, but you know, take away that win on Saturday, I don't think it's the same conversation. I think Brian Dable's your coach of the year. Well, it's pretty hard to argue against Brian Dable, anyways. I've had debates yeah. with some of my Facebook friends that didn't think much of the Giants earlier, and they thought that they would be bandwagon bozos, which I think a lot of them are. I've always felt that Brian Dable has not done an outstanding job with the Giants, and more importantly, what he's done is he took a quarterback that was on the verge of being out. He could be headed for an extension. All it takes is a good coach to get a quarterback straightened out, and Brian Dable and his staff have done a nice job with Daniel Jones. So, you know, I, hey, listen, you know, I'm going to get to predictions in a little while of the final four games for sure. So uh, I wouldn't have a problem if Brian Dable won it at all. I think he was an excellent hire. But that said, okay, well, you know what? I'm going on with more comments. Uh, these topics are what they are. They're not going anywhere. So here you go, George. Jeremy B. writes, the Lions had their destiny to make the playoffs in their own hands if they couldn't, if they wouldn't have lost to Carolina. Okay. All right. Digest them, guys, because there's more coming. Denzel writes, uh, you could say Dayball, and I wouldn't be mad because he brought the best out of Jones, right? 
the healthy Shaquan was like 50% of that, though. Let's not act like Jones is elite, LOL. No, I wouldn't. I think the biggest criticism I've always had toward Barkley was his inability to stay healthy. I mean, we all knew he was a heck of a pick coming out. Yeah. But yeah. when you're slowed and hindered by injuries, you know, it's not like you didn't think this guy was good. And it's I'm glad he's showing the potential that once everybody looked at with this guy, but he's finally healthy. And, you know, that'll segue to another – topic I have in a moment, but I'm going to go back to basketball one more time, but this is probably a story that a lot of us can probably relate to if you've traveled a lot internationally. Pistons Jalen Duran loses his passport ahead of the Pistons game in Paris versus the Bulls. Will he be able to play? I don't know, but man, I, I haven't been across the big pond, and despite the fact, folks, I have to tell you that I do have a uh, fractured tailbone. It's not going to stop me from traveling time zones to go there. But when you need a, I don't know what the medical conditions uh, people over like overseas, I'll cross that bridge. But the question is, is do you feel for Jalen Duran losing his passport ahead of an international game, George? Well, I the, the late breaking news I heard today is he did get it in time. So, um, no, I don't feel sorry for him. Now, the Pistons and the Bulls have been planning this game for months and months and on end. Come on, you can't have that, something like that happen at the last minute. Say, I left my passport, I can't find it, or I didn't apply for my passport at renewal in time, or whatever the case may be. Come on, Jalen, man up, man up, man. <laughs> but the, the news I heard today, Scott, is that he did get it, but it is kind of embarrassing, though, because, you know, yes. here it makes this big news story, you know. Pistons got 200, 200 in the Pistons family have traveled. Uh, across to the game in Paris tomorrow. So uh, great turnout. Owner owner Gores is there, of course, and uh, it's going to be a great game. I'm happy the Pistons have been selected um, to be in this international game once again. Yeah, I'm just I just pulled this topic because I knew we needed a lighthearted topic. Yeah, losing a passport to me is as lighthearted as you can get. So that's why I decided to throw it in there and have some fun with it. All right, Jacob. I don't know, losing a passport to me would be a very nerve-wracking situation, albeit he got it straightened out. But can you imagine that, Jacob? George, this isn't the World War II era of people. <laughs> when you're 24 years old and you've had two kids, there's a reason this show, there was a show called Arrested Development because men have become Arrested Development. You're telling millionaires who have never had money before that there's more than the money. And th these kind of situations... Uh, ahead, it would be about 11 and 5, 12, 12 and 5, 13 and 4. And it's because, I'm just saying that, and it's because there's an actual system. With Dable, there's a system. Absolutely. So, yeah, 12 and 5, 13 and 4. But, okay. the, but the thing is, though, um, the biggest thing, though, I'm saying that, it's there's arrested development. These things, it's lighthearted. But there are these situations that happen because this isn't that era anymore where you got a couple of kids, you got to be responsible. You come back from war and you go get you go get your um, job and you got to go get it and you got to pay for a house. This isn't that anymore. You've got multimillionaires that have never seen money in their life. They're nothing but irresponsible mostly anyway. And then so like this, this is almost lighthearted because it doesn't surprise anyone. Mind, it would get a, here's the thing. Whoever was handling him, and there's handlers in those things, they messed up. Yeah, true. Okay, JB, what's your take on this? It's a missing passport. It happens to hundreds and thousands of people every day. You know, it just happens that his job is going to be overseas and he has to get there. Not a big deal. It obviously, as George said, got taken care of. Listen, we all lose things. How many people can't find their car keys tonight? You know, who knows where your wallet is, where your driver's license is. Get over it. It's fine. It's not a story. We have nothing else to talk about. Tom Brady's out of the playoffs. We're talking about a guy who lost his passport. Get out of here with this garbage. Look at this. Well, you know what? <laughs> he, he, he hasn't had a cigarette in the last five minutes. <laughs> he hasn't. That's okay. You know what, JB? I, I enjoy the candor here about the passport situation. But I have to tell you, my friend, when I saw this thing for the first time, I'm sick and tired of talking about serious stuff all the time. And that thing called lighthearted 101 just happened to hit me with this guy. And you know what? I'm glad you had a very short reaction to it because you know what? 
I will follow suit here. We will go on to the next topic. Anyways, but I just thought, you know, this Pat Ford thing was all too interesting. So I'm glad we talked about it. Anyways, all right. <laughs> but now we're going to go graduate from passports. Okay, JB, we're going to let you lead off now that you have all the, this energy about what we should nice. talk about. Okay, now, you're ready? now we're going to talk some good stuff. Go ahead. What? Don't you think this is good <laughs> stuff? Kidding with you. You have the right to your opinion. I have the right to be silent, but that never happens. All right. Or snide. That too. <laughs> All right. At any rate, should Lamar Jackson have traveled to Cincinnati with his team to support and provide leadership? All right. Is that good enough for you, JB? Absolutely not. The man was sick. And well, the Ravens, the right. Ravens admitted it. The Ravens admitted it. Just like the people that were saying he should have played. RG3, the perfect person, former NFL player, to talk about this, publicly commented on LinkedIn and Facebook how, look at his career, because he played when he was injured. So why would Lamar want to go ahead and do that? And if he's sick and the organization knows that, why should he have traveled? I mean, seriously, why would you risk other people in the organization getting sick? Makes no sense. The, you know what the Ravens should have done? Played better. There's the story. Shouldn't have fumbled at the one yard line. Right. Should have took care of the ball. Maybe maybe Harbaugh needs to learn how to coach better in fourth quarter situations. How many games does he cost the team? That's a good point. All right, Jacob. I got a story here. It's an old from a, re- a wrestler from a little back to two thousands. Uh, Chris Candido. He had himself a knee surgery. He uh, decided a little after the thing he was going to go on a plane. He ended up getting a blood clot. It killed him. Now, in the midst of Dar- uh, of uh, of um, ha- of Hamlin, in the midst of Hamlin and the cardiac arrest, why would you risk somebody with a bad knee to go in an air pressure situation like an airplane? To put is, and that is your star, and that is your absolute big star. Why would you risk that for him to go give him, oh, it's like, oh, give him a pat on the back when he's not going to play in the first place. If you put him on a plane with his leg that bad, would a situation like that, that could happen, especially with the way that this happened with Hamlin. So, no, absolutely not. You should have, you should have done the game better and just go with it. But besides the fact, I think he's done with Baltimore anyway. I think he goes. Well, there you go. All right, go ahead, George. Patriots, Jets, Falcons. There's a lot of teams that would be interested in Lamar. And I agree with you guys, Jacob and JB. I mean, no way should he have been on that play. No way. It was it was not necessary. Um, you know, I know you want to cheer your team on, brotherhood and all that good stuff. But uh, there's a limit to that. And uh, – Boy, Jacob, you just hit it. You just nailed it. I mean, you know, if something like that would have happened, and w- what we've seen happen to other people, athletes and non-athletes that have happened with blood clots and things like that, uh, no, we don't. We don't need to have that happen. It, it, it wasn't necessary. I agree, with guys. Right. The only thing I'll say about the whole thing is that so we all talk about finances. Okay. First of all, you guys are right. I think he's done with Baltimore. Anyways, I really do. I mean, you know, they had, this contract situation has been lingering for the longest period of time. They haven't closed the deal. So I think that Lamar Jackson could be headed somewhere. It just depends on the draft capital that they get. Number one, though, playing, taking the other side for just a moment. Had he had been under contract and he had the deal that he wanted, would he have traveled? Well, you know, you kind of wonder about that, but there doesn't appear to be any motivation to want to do it, knowing that both sides are really not liking each other at the moment. So... I see both sides. He, he was better safe than sorry anyways by not traveling. I mean, let's face reality. One of the reasons I don't even fly on planes for a while is I worry about the COVID situation in the airports as well. So I've been doing a lot more driving to begin with the plane safe. So I think the fact that you have both parties that are at odds, Lamar Jackson's less likely going to go ahead and take any chances. For what? You know what I mean? For what? So J.B., Yes, you are. De- you definitely hit a bullseye with your comments. You really do. In fact, all of you guys did. I just think that's one of those things that when I bring something like this in here, you know, it is something that's being heavily talked about during the course of the week. And I, I just think it's interesting to get lots of outspoken opinions on this. And I agree. I think Lamar Jackson's headed for somebody else. I can't imagine Steve Bashotti, the owner, 
tagging him two years in a row. I mean, that would throw his payroll out of balance, wouldn't it? To begin with, if you think things are bad now, slap a franchise tag mm-hmm. out one or two years, and then what do you have? I mean, that franchise tag, the only one that's made out like a bandit with a franchise tag is Kirk Cousins. He made a lot of money off of it. Yeah. I'll say. Yeah. I mean, so. With a losing record. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's true. Under- In the big and- games. But I'll tell you one thing, Kirk Cousins remind me of Bobby Mania, whoever you got as an agent. I like I I take that recommendation all day long because Bobby Benia is making out pretty good. Yeah. And who and who else? Cliff Kingsbury's made out all right. JV, what do you think of that? The guy goes ahead, gets twenty seven and a half million dollars, goes to Thailand, don't want to be bothered with coaching. Not bad, right, JB, if you can get it for five years. Listen, Cliff Kingsbury was the worst hire, I think, in probably the twenty first century. In the NFL after Urban Meyer, yeah. you know it's one A, one and one A. Cliff Kingsbury was a horrible coach, and how he got—I don't know—it just said what's going on with that Arizona organization. Yeah, good but for him. Know. Get that money. He's got a heck of an agent. Period. All yeah. right, that's all I'll say. All right, NFL predictions. Start off with you, George. Jags at Chiefs. Chiefs. Okay. Chiefs will cover. I don't care about covering. Just give me the outright pick. <laughs> yeah, it's KC all the way. Okay. What about you, Jacob? Chiefs all the way. Thanks, Jacob. <laughs> Chiefs. Chiefs. Way to go, JB. Yeah, I do believe the Chiefs will end up my heart's with the Jaguars. Okay. Giants at the Eagles. George? Well, I think it's going to be closer than most people think. I mean, the Giants – as you guys were talking about earlier, I mean, they've had a hell of a run this year, and uh, JB was talking about it. I, I, I'm i going to go with the Eagles, of course, best record in the league I in the conference. I really think that it's going to be a close game. I'm going to say it's going to be decided by less than seven points. Fair enough. Okay. Jacob? Giants by a field goal at the end. Ooh. I, I am going to say it, and it's because – I saw that game, and I saw a couple other games where I was talking about the Dodgers this year, like in baseball, talking about the Dodgers when I said they were going out early because I saw the lulls. The Eagles get into lulls, and the Giants are not a team to get into a lull with. They've got a defense, got a heck of a defense, and I can see the Giants taking it out in the last second. JB? Listen, I'm a Giant fan. We won our Super Bowl last week. We played the top three seed team that we could beat. We got nothing more to do. I can see them winning the game, but they're not going to. It's a division game, so anything can happen. And the Eagles have all the pressure in the world on them. But that being said, we had a great season. We'll be back next year. Hopefully, Gable can do exactly what he did this year and improve on it. But great year for the Giants. Eagles will be playing next week. And obviously, it looks like there's a little bit of objectivity when it comes to you out here. All right, let's 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 go to the chat room again, get some – all right, Denzel, here you go. Chiefs 30-17 over the Jags, right? Next one, 27-24 over the Giants. Get it? Next one, smoking Jeremy B, 31-21 to over the Jags. You can see that. And let's continue on, 24-21. Close one. Again, a close one. Yep. Well, that's, or, you know, doesn't look like there are too many blowouts over there. Okay, let's continue on. Okay, let's go to the next. Mind you, latest starters and only lost by six. All right, so with that said, you know, I, I, I believe the Chiefs are going to win. I also think that the Eagles are going to win. And I sh- and while JB is deciding to be objective, okay, this is a perfect opportunity to let everybody know that in a matter of weeks, JB and I are going to have our own show called The Celebrity and the Journalist. So, I'm glad that JB's taking some objective steps here to be a journalist to promote the show. And I'm looking forward to doing something with, with JB and I, we've been working, talking about some ideas. I think we nailed this one, right? JB. I definitely think so. Okay. All right. Sunday. This is a really one more interesting matchups, George Cincinnati at Buffalo. The venues change. These two teams meet again. I'm concerned about Buffalo. I mean, you know, they only won by what a field goal. Cincinnati's offensive line is a little banged up, and I don't know how that's going to affect Burroughs, but it could. I it, This is, again, going to be a close game, but I, I got to go with Buffalo. I mean, they're at home. The weather's going to be probably fine. We're getting this crazy Midwest 
thaw right now going on. So uh, I don't think that'll play into it besides Cincinnati's an outdoor team anyways. But I'll, I'll go with uh, Buffalo 31 to uh, 20. Fair enough. Okay, Jacob. Uh, I'm going to say 38, 35 Buffalo. I think it's going to be a Ooh. shootout, absolute shootout. And it's just, these are just two hot um, quarterbacks. And we had that like that Buffalo and KC. And I think that the biggest thing is, and yes, um, see, the biggest thing about it is I think Buffalo's going to learn from that game where Skyler, um, you know, with Skyler, with Skyler Thompson, they're going to learn from that and know what they did with defense. And they're going to have a lot better defensive showing. Well, I'm flashing the predictions as we go along. Then, yeah. So. So we'll just keep them up there and everybody. All right, JB, what do you got for this one? So there's two winners of this game. CBS, which will carry the game, is going to love it because this is the game of the week. Um, and then after that, you know, honestly, it's a tough game. It's the game, probably the best game of the playoffs. The winner of this game is going to the Super Bowl from the AFC. Uh, it's tough. I think Buffalo wants it a little bit more than, than Cincinnati, but I, I can see it going either way. It's going to be close. I'll go. I'll go with Buffalo. All right, you know what? I'll be the black sheep of this whole thing and be a little different. I have a feeling Cincinnati's going to win. I like Joe Burrow. I like a couple of targets, but that's it's okay to have a different opinion in this group. I just something about Cincinnati I just like. Finally, Dallas Cowboys 49ers, George. Well, smoking uh, smoking Jeremy got his prediction on there before we did. Smoking Jeremy said 49ers 28, Dallas 21. I have to disagree with JB. I think this is the game of the weekend, and Fox Sports' ratings will prove it. This uh, this is a great matchup, a historic matchup, as Scott alluded to earlier, the 49ers against Dallas. And um, I'm telling you, I think that Jerry Jones is going to have a smile on his face, and, and I think they're going to win. I'm going to say Dallas is going to win by a field goal. Well, that, Denzel don't agree with you. I'll tell you why. He's well, Will's got his 20 to 17. Well, I'll tell you one thing I learned about Will, he can type fast. And of course, uh, there's Denzel. So I'm going with the 49ers. I am. I just, something about the 49ers I just like about it. And, you know, I, I don't want to see the Brock Purdy thing end that quick. I really don't. I think it has something pretty good going on there. So it'll be, I think it definitely has a, has the uh, uh, makings of being the game of the week. All right. Well, but this is the time of the broadcast where we go. I forgot this too. What's that? You, you forgot two right. more. <laughs> I did. All right. Well, <laughs> you forgot us. Um, My mind Niners, is working a mile Niners a minute. 21 17. Niners 21 17. I think it's a low scoring game. I think they both have great defenses. And see, and Purdy is not going to, I mean, that's the whole big thing is Purdy is not going, is not that experienced when you get a good uh, defense. I think they can do enough. I think they got a great system, but those are two great defenses. I think it's a defensive matchup. I'm glad I didn't forget you because you're you're on target. So yeah, I mean, I'm having so much in the chat room. I haven't had to do this much. Candy does a lot of it. She's much quicker than I am. But keeping up with this incredible active chat room tonight to me has been a blast. All right, JB. So I mean, one of us could play quarterback for the 49ers with all the weapons they have. The 49ers are going to win. Dallas, it's going to be a close game because the Dallas defense is really good, as is the 49ers defense. But there's too many weapons on that 49ers offense to not score, they're going to win by a field goal. Okay, fair enough. Like that prediction. Now is the time of the point where everybody gets their own parting shot. Okay, George, lead off. Well, my parting shot is going to be something that we talked about earlier. Um, I don't know what it is about the Detroit Pistons, but they have some sort of a, a lure to the NBA. Uh, three times is the charm. They've been to Mexico City. They've been to London. And now Paris. Um, interesting because uh, the team is is playing horse crap this year. And even though they got a lot of young talent, um, I, I think it was a, a stupid decision by the NBA to send Detroit and Chicago to Paris. I would have gone much more with two marquee teams. Chicago is okay, but I would not have picked the Pistons. It just baffles me to think that they were selected in this marquee game, which, by the way, will be broadcast nationally tomorrow afternoon. And uh, good luck. I hope it's a good game, but Pistons will probably get smoked. That's my parting shot. Well, you know what? Here's one. Here's a good one here for you, uh, JB, from our colleague Denzel. Great show, fellas, and you didn't drive JB to drink. Good job. Well, he was drinking something. We saw him with the cup. There you go. I don't know. He's What's in the cup is the question. Yeah, there you go. 
Uh, we'll see if we can find a sponsor to go ahead. What's in the cup presented by? All right, I'll, I'll put our business people out there for it. Okay. Jacob, give me your parting shot, please. Tonight I had a uh, – we didn't have time to do this tonight. I had a topic called Should There Be Trash Talk in, um, in sports? Should there be more? I mean, is it necessary? And the answer is yes. Looking back, we had every type of sport you get. I mean, you get – you get all of the colorful types. You had Will Chamberlain. You had the Will Chamberlain versus Bill Russell. You get uh, baseball. You get Reggie Jackson. You get basketball. Okay, we had Bird and Magic. Let's go to pool. Minnesota Fats. UJ Puckett. Uh, I mean, William Moscone. Jimmy Karras. Everybody. They all. I mean, William, you know about Minnesota Fats. I you two would know about Minnesota Fats. The biggest loud mouth this side of the world. It was all color. That kind of color brought John Madden to cover a pool match in 1985. John Madden, the biggest name, covered pool. The, the thing is, right now, because of the internet and because of everybody knowing everything, we don't have movie stars. We don't have stars. Everybody knows too much. We don't have a mystery. We don't have air of anything. We don't have a color because everybody's afraid to be offended. At some point, we need to get to some. We need to get to that level where we have some air of mystery again, where we have some kind of color again, and we start ignoring the ones that are offended, and they start understanding it. So, we, yes, do we need the trash talk? You better believe it. All right, George, read the comment. Yep. Jeremy B says, "Great show, guys." I, I say what I always say: try every day to be better than you were the day before. It's the only way to make the world a better place. Amen, pal. Amen. All right, JB, give me your parting shot. So two quick thoughts from the playoffs that we really did talk about right okay. now was the outrage over the extra point misses of the Dallas-Tampa Bay game by Barr. People saying that he was shaving points. Multiple people tweeting that on Twitter with the Advancement in sports gambling right now in multiple states beyond Vegas and um, New, you know New Jersey. The thought that people even are even saying this is absurd. The man would end up in federal prison. He doesn't know what's going to happen the rest of the game that he's missing an extra point in the first quarter. The over under missed by a half a point, and he ended up hitting I think the last extra point. So to even say that was absurd and to insult him in that way. I, you know, to me, it's one thing to, to say stupid things, but that's just beyond stupid. And it was said by some important people. So, you know, next time, maybe if you have a voice and you can speak publicly, think before you speak. Uh, and secondly, the Chargers owners, how you let Staley get on the plane and fly back to Los Angeles after that despicable outing, being up 27 to nothing, I'm sorry, this is why I can't own a team, because I would have had him walk back to Los Angeles. And when he got back there, I would have then fired him, because there's no way I want him around any of my players after you blow a 27 to nothing halftime lead where the quarterback threw, the opposing quarterback threw four interceptions. I don't want to be near anybody. He's not even going into the locker room, not even talking to anybody. The, the fact that he still has a job and they fired the offensive coordinator – ridiculous you have no business owning a team well i can tell you right now when i left tia bank stadium i had a feeling in my mind he was going to get let go i mean think about this for just a second okay the jaguars are down 27 and nothing they score seven points at the end and then trevor lawrence and doug peterson got it figured out now doug peterson has always told me to me okay that he doesn't believe in motivational speeches or any of that business. You know, he leaves it to guys like us to do it. So if you've ever gotten to know Doug Peterson, and I've gotten to know him the last few weeks, he's just a remarkable coach. So I'm, my parting shot is one that I really don't like to mention because I'm sick and tired of the annual nature for which we have to do this. And if you're a Green Bay Packer fan, you know what I'm talking about, Okay. I am so sick and tired of the Aaron Rodgers drama. Aaron, here's the deal, okay? The reason why the Packers didn't make the playoffs is because you didn't 
do the necessary things before the season to get reacquainted with your new wide receivers. Get Chase Devontae Adams out the door because you couldn't make up your mind, okay? You could not make up your mind. So I'll tell you what, folks. Wake me up in a couple months when Aaron Rodgers figures out what he's going to do because the only ones that will be out there talking about it will be my friends or maybe not friends at ESPN. First take and get up, okay, because – because they can't find enough good stuff to talk about. So we got to find out as, as the Rodgers turns, okay? Because that's what this stupid, idiotic soap opera is going to amount to. Will Aaron Rodgers go to the Raiders? Who knows? Hey, you get to read. You, you could go back with Devontae Adams. Where is he going to go in the right situation? Pat McAvee's great. You know, he gives this guy an opportunity to voice up what he's going to say. So, you know what, Aaron? And everybody, wake me up in a couple months when it's over because I am sick and tired of it. Period. All right. So before I turn over to everybody for their final ways to get a hold of them, I do want to point out, I want to first of all thank George, Jacob, and JB for being on the program. These guys, like I say, are my dream team. I say it because I truly mean it, and their insights are so uh, appreciated. So with that said, I just want to point out that the Sports Exchange can be heard on iHeartRadio, Apple, Spotify, Google, or, or wherever you get your podcast, okay? And please hit the red subscribe button on YouTube, South Florida Tribune. We're striving for a 1,000 subscribers. Why do I say it slow? Because I don't want to be accused of anybody saying that I spoke too fast, okay? So with that said, George, let everybody know how they can get a hold of you in the book. Detroit Sports Broadcasters on the Air is my book, comprehensive look at the history of broadcasting and the sports venues from Detroit and all over Michigan. Uh, Scott, you're featured in the book, too. Really easy read. There's a link to my book here at the um, South Florida Tribune website. I write for the Motor City Tribune. It's a great, easy to easy to read book. And Scott, you got a couple of nice pictures of uh, Jimmy Connors and Muhammad Ali. You did interviews with them. And... Uh, I can also be reached at gicorn at yahoo.com and at SNG Sports 99. And you can also read me in the Detroit Monitor newspaper locally here in Michigan. Jacob? Oh, I am on at Jake the Pundit at Twitter where you can find all of my apologies to Beyonce. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, though, so on Sunday nights, I am with um, the Basket Bros with Scott, with Scott and everybody else, Jay and Will. Monday nights, I am doing uh, Monday nights. I am doing the, the pundit views, which this Monday night will be a pre recorded, but is with Andrew Petcash. Big, uh, wonderful interview. So I'm enjoying this show. Wednesday nights, uh, no, Tuesday nights during the season's the Cup uh, Confidential. Wednesday nights, doubleheader, the pundits, pundit, sports exchange with the both with Scott, with my Scott and I. Uh, Thursday nights, I get away from sports a little bit and I do yin and yang with the TJ Sanson. Politics, philosophy, um, films, everything. And then once in a blue moon, when they need me, Friday nights done up as a thing, I do the gauntlet. So I stay busy. I'm also working on a movie, too. All right, JB. JB underscore the program on Twitter. Sideline Sports every Tuesday, 830 at Sideline Sports 1. Here Wednesdays at JJ Sports Express, both sides of the coin also on Wednesday. Make sure you're watching couple things I left out. I'll leave them for now. Twitter, South Florida Tribune. You can do it at Tribune South. Website, www.southfloridatribune.com. Special kudos to Candy Abling, who put, takes care of everything with the Tribune in its entirety. And if you have any questions, comments about the shows, want to be on one, South Florida Tribune at gmail.com. I want to thank my crew, and especially the active activity we had in the chat room. We appreciate every one of you that participated on tonight's edition of Sports Exchange. So on behalf of George Icor and Jacob Christner, JB Ellis, my name is Scott Morgan off the Motor City Manmouth. Thank you for joining us. And we'll return for the Sports Exchange next week. Wednesday night. Good night, everybody. Night. Good night. Later.